what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. If you're new around here, my name is Tressa and I am a fifth grade teacher in Alberta, Canada. I make videos here on YouTube about teaching, learning, and lifestyle. If any of that interests you, I would love to have you consider subscribing and following along. In today's video, I am taking you along on a bit of a journey or perhaps a project with me. Um, you can see behind me that my classroom is currently in a bit of a disaster state. And this is going to be, I guess like the first part of what I'm imagining will be something like a three part series of me packing up my classroom for the summer for the end of the year. Um, of course, it's a little bit bittersweet. <laughs> Normally I have a whole class of students who are able to help me do this at the end of the year as we kind of close off the year together and we don't have that opportunity this year, so I'm in here solo. That's okay, we're doing what we need to do to keep people healthy, of course. So um, this year's a little bit different and why I kind of said I think that it's going to end up being like a three part series to packing up my classroom is that I actually just got news last week that I am moving classrooms next year. So same school, same grade, everything else is the same. So I am lucky and very fortunate in that scenario. However, I am moving classrooms. It's, <laughs> it's a little bit disappointing to me because I absolutely love the classroom that I'm currently in. If you've seen in past videos, I've kind of done like little flashes of it, but it's a, what we call a portable, I guess another way to describe it would be like a little bit of like a mobile home classroom that is outside on the school property. And so it's a standalone building that is just mine and my kids, and this is where we get to hang out. So it's similar to like having our own little clubhouse and it's so much fun. And the kids really look forward to being in the portables and they really miss them afterwards. So I'm certainly going to miss it. I am moving into the building and so there's a couple different things that kind of need to happen in order for me to be ready for that stage. Um, the first is that I really want to respect the teacher who is currently in the classroom that I'm moving into. I want to make sure that she doesn't feel rushed and there's no reason why she needs to be out of there right away. So I want to give her her own time. The other thing is that I need to show some respect to our janitors who are going to be coming into my classroom next week to clean it up and that's this classroom that I'm talking about. So I got the email that they're coming in next week and they would like to do kind of more of like a deep clean of this classroom. I guess I'm feeling kind of awkward because I'm not exactly sure what I want it to look like at the end of the day today, but I'm going to be here likely for a few hours and my goals are kind of to get everything off the walls, to pack up things that are kind of loose on the floors, on desks, just kind of around the room and get everything kind of, I guess more like compact and more stored in a way that it's not taking up as much space so people can actually come in here and clean. I just want to get to it and see where we can get by the end of the day today and hope that I'm leaving it in a bit of an easier state for the people who need to come in and clean it to do their job as well. So my first step for today and I'm really nervous to take this on because it is way worse than I had even imagined in my mind that I had left it. But anyway, that is my desk area. So I'm gonna quickly show you what it looks like right now. But I left it in a disaster state and I'm going to start with that today. Get that completely tidied up, all my personal items put away to be ready to move to my new classroom and just take on that area. So this is currently what my desk area looks like. Um, I don't even really know what to say about it. It's a mixture of art projects, math assignments, tickets, headphones, papers, things that kids have given me and just an absolute mess. And I don't think it'll take me very long because actually a lot of what is on my desk is garbage. However, um, I also need to put all of kind of my own items away and make sure that they're somewhere that I'm going to be able to find them when I'm making the move to my new classroom. So that is where I am going to begin today. Right, I got a really good start on my desk. However, I'm getting to the point where I 
have all the garbage off now and now it's about putting things kind of where they belong and where I'm going to be able to find them when I go looking for them in September. I know that is a huge tip that I have if you are a first year teacher or if you are cleaning out your classroom for the first time. It is so, so important to not just shove things in places that you are never going to find them again. I know um, after my first year of teaching, I was like, oh, well, I'll just put everything away and I'll remember where I put it. You won't and it's really unfortunate when you go looking for something in the fall and it isn't where you thought it was going to be. So. I do think that you need to use this time not only for cleaning up, but also for a little bit of organizing. Of course, you may take a new approach and some new ideas in the fall, but putting things in at least like containers, items that are similar, go in the same place so that you have an idea of where they might be when you go looking for them in September. So I have huge red totes, which you can see over there. I have, I think, six of them and they are all different like categories of things that I am going to put away. So I'm going to spend the next few minutes just laying them out in this open space right here so that as I'm going through my stuff, if I find something and I know it belongs in one of the totes, I can just put it there and then I don't have to do that later on. Okay, so now that I have the totes all lined up, um, a lot of them are already pretty full, but I actually was going to head out to Walmart or something this morning and grab some more. However, because my classroom layout is going to be different next year, I'm really nervous to buy new stuff until I get in the classroom and I see how my current stuff fits and then determine what I need. So even though I know I need more totes and no more space to put things, I am going to hold off on that a little bit and just kind of really stuff these totes as full as I can. I also have some like reusable bags and things like that that I can use. And then when I'm actually in my new classroom, I can kind of figure out the layout, where things are going to go and what my storage is going to look like for next year. Okay, so um, I started trying to put things away in the bins, but I realized I'm already super frustrated by how I have these organized because I technically don't have them organized. I start the year with really good intentions. Every bin has a specific purpose. And then throughout the year, I just find myself tossing things in there to get them out of the way. So I don't wanna prioritize this today because like I said, this doesn't really matter for what I'm trying to accomplish for this week. But I need to make a little bit more space in the bin. So I am gonna spend just a couple minutes moving a few things around and making some more room for the things that are around the classroom that need to end up in these bins at the end of the day today. many lids and containers and things like that I just discovered in that bin. However, <laughs> I became this way from experience. In my first year, I used to have to like bag and borrow and steal for absolutely everything around the school. And so I just kind of set a goal of like, okay, I need a class set of that in my classroom so that I can grab it whenever I need it. And Yes, sometimes I need a class set of lids for math activities, for art activities, when we're painting. There's so many uses for things like that. And so I do throw out lids sometimes. I don't keep every lid I've ever used, but my goal is always to end up with a class set of something and then a couple extra so that I always have them available and I'm not panicking if I decide to change my plan one day and do something different. I have it in a bin in my classroom. I can grab it. It's just gotten to the point where it's not really organized. So I'm gonna spend a couple minutes organizing it. But if you have that teacher in your school where you come up with something random that you need in the run of a day and you send out an email and somebody responds to it saying, yeah, I have that. Like I am that person at my school. You can ask me for the most random item and I probably can find you at least one, perhaps a class set in my classroom. So don't knock it until you've tried it.
a little bit of a break. Um, I went around the classroom and tried to take a lot of the stuff off of the walls. That's one of the main things my students usually do for me and they're so fast at it and they organize my things into little piles. Anyway, I got a coffee on my way here and that was like three hours ago and I didn't even open it yet. So I'm just sitting and having a little bit of a break. Looking around my classroom though, I just, I don't know, like it's, it's hard to put into words. Like I've seen a lot of things on social media that are like, hey teacher, when you go into your classroom and it says, March 13th on the board, like just remember that you still matter and your job still matters and all this stuff. And I mean, I see some of that, like this isn't my first time back in my classroom. I know some teachers in some schools were completely banned from the school building in and of itself. But actually at my school, if I wanted to work here every single day, I could. And I'm very lucky that my community that I live in here was not hit very hard by the virus so I'm very fortunate of that and I know that not everyone is in that position so I do recognize that there are certainly people out there who are struggling a lot more than I am. Um, a lot of things here are opening back up. There is a hope of school in September but I look around my classroom and even just putting things into bins and organizing them I have a hard time doing that because normally I put the things on top that I'm going to want to reach for when I'm sitting up my classroom in September and this time today when I'm going through my bins I'm thinking okay well how do I do this now because what if there isn't school in September and I open this bin because I'm looking for something and I see all of my classroom decorations on the top like that's just gonna break my heart I don't know I'm like apprehensive about packing up my classroom I was really feeling that I was going to be able to leave a lot of my classroom the same and kind of just go with it in September because I really truly felt like I was able to make this room my own this year. And if you're a teacher, you probably get what I'm saying because this is my second classroom in this school. And then the classroom I'm moving to will be my third classroom in five years. And actually each classroom is a different layout, different setup, different kind of storage and part of the school. I really don't wanna come across like I'm complaining because I know how lucky I am to have a job and for consistency in my job like I am still going to be teaching grade five and I think that's obviously the biggest thing that I would have been hoping for because I've really fallen in love with grade five the past couple years the new layout of the classroom completely throws me off because this classroom has just really felt like home to me this year even like when I sat when I came to sit here like my pillow says this is my happy place and it's the pillow that I keep on my teacher chair and I bought it late last year when I really started to feel like I had made this classroom my own and I was happy here. It was like sustainable. It was a place that I was really going to want to be for a while. I think I'm really struggling more than I thought I would about the classroom move. And I know that it's dramatic, um, but I'm just trying to be real. I am excited, like it'll be a fresh start in a different part of the school and I'm close to my very best friends in the school. So I know it's the right thing. Um, but it's hard to say goodbye to a space that you spend so much time in. Like as a teacher, your classroom truly does become your home and most school years, like I will spend more time here than I will at my actual home. I don't know. It's just, I guess, surreal, like looking around and knowing that I probably won't teach in this room maybe ever again. <laughs> in terms of storing um, and just storage purposes is to make sure all my bulletin board borders just go in their own bin. I have a huge collection of them for various purposes, themes, seasons, etc, etc. Um, but I just roll them up. I laminate all of my bulletin board borders so that they last a really long time and don't end up with getting destroyed by staples and things like that. 
but I just kind of have them all rolled up in there. I know that you can buy fancy bulletin board storage pockets and things like that and those kinds of things often just aren't really in my budget so I just got a tote and I just kind of have them curled around not super organized but I know what I have in there so if I'm looking for a certain theme or color scheme or something like that I know it's in here and I just kind of got to search through and it's a really efficient way for me to keep all of my volition board stored together. The other tip that I have is to roll up a lot of the things that you're going to be using um, next year. So my cursive alphabet I often put up every year. It's not in our curriculum to teach kids cursive, but in a normal year I do try in grade five to get to some cursive writing because I'm just concerned that we're going to lose that art if we don't continue to teach it. So I put this up every year as a reference for kids. A lot of kids find it really cool to learn how to write cursively. So if you have this up all year, it's also a really good reference for them to kind of teach themselves. But either way, um, I do roll up things like this and then put an elastic around them because I just find that it stores them better. They don't get squished or end up with curled edges or things like that. They do take up more space this way. It's harder to store them. But if you're concerned more about preservation, then I do find this to be a really effective way to store materials that you're just going to be grabbing again in September. Keeps them really nice. Just remember that when you reach for them in September, they are gonna be a little bit curled, so they're harder to tape up on the wall. So I often will unpack them one day and then be putting them up on my wall a couple days later or something when they've had the chance to lay flat. Um, I do the exact same thing with anchor charts simply because I don't have a better method right now. I've seen a lot of really cool ways to store anchor charts so that they're more readily available to you. But the ones that I often have up on my wall are math anchor charts and because we switch units so often, I will switch out my anchor charts quite a bit. If you have a really cool way to store your anchor charts in your classroom that works for you, I would love for you to leave me your idea in the comments below because I currently just roll them up and then unpack them in September. And I know that there's more efficient ways out there. So if you have an idea that you think would work for me in my classroom, I would love to learn from you. So please leave me a comment. Anyway, for right now, because I don't have a better solution, I am going to roll mine up and I always roll them with the side I care more about that actually has the information on the inside. I just roll them up, try to meet the edges at the top, but they all are different sizes um, towards the bottom so it gets harder. But I often just try to keep all my anchor charts together and that way I don't have multiple rolls of anchor charts. But I realize that this isn't like a pro tip or anything, but it is what works for me right now and I do find this to be pretty efficient and these are all my math anchor charts so they're just all together and I know where they are come September. were one of my favorite classroom decorations this year. I actually grabbed these from the Target dollar spot last August. Um, I'm from Canada so obviously we don't have Targets but I was driving across the country from my hometown back to where I worked last summer and we ended up going through the state so we stopped in at Target and I saw these and just fell in love. So I grabbed these and put them up in my classroom. I had the create one was on my like art board. The read one was by my bookshelf. Write was by my pencil sharpening station. Explore was on top of my maps and learn was by my tattle table. The only thing was of course like they're from the Target dollar spot so they're not made to last. So unfortunately like they look really good from far away but they're quite flimsy from up close. So maybe I will be looking into like finding an Etsy shop or something that could make something similar because I adore them. So if I could find like a wooden version that would last a long time, that would be amazing. So if you know of anything like that, please let me know in the comments below.
So I just started pulling down my art board. Um, it's just a bulletin board where we would hang up art projects or things that we created. Um, I can't show you because it has my students' names on it. But I did just wanna give you a little bit of a tip that I try to do every single year and that's take lots of pictures of your classroom before you take everything down. I think it's more important if you're going to be in the same classroom year after year because then it helps you to set it up and to remember how you did things the year before because I know if you're a perfectionist like I am, I always find myself with a measuring tape and I'm measuring things and leveling them out in September to make sure that everything looks as perfect as it can but I always refer back to pictures from previous years to see how I arrange things in my classroom because that just helps me get started rather than going from scratch so before you take things down in your classroom even if you think you're not going to use that same setup or that same idea again take a picture of it because it'll help you so much the next year that you go to set it up all right so I just finished books and contrary to what I said before about just stuffing things into bins, I honestly did that with my books because I really just need to like overhaul my entire book section. I organize them by month so that I can put like themes and seasonal books together in terms of like my read aloud books. But I really just need to spend a day in my classroom emptying those bins and reorganizing them. So today I just stuffed things in bins and tried to make room for them. I'm honestly hitting a little bit of a wall. I've been here for like a little bit more than four hours and I just kind of have that feeling of like I'm not accomplishing very much. I'm also a little bit frustrated because I don't in my mind really know what I should be trying to accomplish today because normally like I know what my classroom is supposed to look like for the summer but because I'm tidying up right now for it to be cleaned but then I'm also going to be moving out in a couple weeks. I'm like unsure of my expectations today so I'm getting a little bit frustrated in terms of that because I'm like packing things and shoving things away but then I'm also going to have to just take them out and move them in a couple weeks. But I know I shouldn't be complaining so um, I do have to head into the school because I ran out of garbage bags so I gotta run in and grab some more of those. It is like pouring rain, like unbelievably loud torrential downpour outside. Um, I had music playing and I like, couldn't even hear the music because it was raining so hard. So I'm going to just sprint in. I guess this is a good time to talk about a reason why I will be happy to have my classroom inside next year. <laughs> Don't get downpoured on on a rainy day. But anyway, gonna run in, grab some garbage bags, and then I'm just going to really focus on finishing up just doing the best I can for today and getting it to a state where it can be cleaned because I am not interested in coming back <laughs> for round two tomorrow. So I'm just going to hopefully not have to spend a ton more time here and get it done. All right, um, I am definitely calling it a day for today. Um, I did the best I could. I'm not thrilled with how it turned out, but I feel like it's okay for what I needed to accomplish for this week and then of course I'm moving everything anyway so that'll happen in a couple weeks and we'll just take that as it is but I thought I would give you a quick little tour before I leave show you what I decided to do and what I decided to leave um, and then I'm gonna head home okay so for my desk area um, I made sure to clean everything off of my desk so that that can be wiped down. Um, I kind of left a lot of my mess over here. It's certainly better than it was, um, but that stuff that just needs to be directly moved to my other room. So I didn't really have covered space at all or anywhere else to put it. But this area looks about a thousand times better than it did. So I am happy. Like I said before, I got everything off the walls. All my garbage is ready to be taken out. So it looks way better than it did. Over here, I just have some um, religion textbooks that I need to return to the library. So that's a project for a sunnier day. I was gonna grab a card and do it, but I don't want them to get wrecked by the rain. Um, over here, I just had stuff on the walls and all of my walls are now completely bare. So I got all of that stuff off. Over here, I've got a just huge box of board games. I don't have a place for it, but it can be pretty easily moved around. So I thought it would be okay to just leave it there. Um, normally, if I was packing up for the complete like summer clean up, 
I would cover all of my books, but because I need to move my books, I did not cover them along with all of the stuff on this shelf over here. Um, this is where all of my mess is kind of contained and that way it's in one space. So there's still room to be scrubbing floors and doing deep clean with the vacuum and stuff like that. So I did just stack my bins and kind of stuff things wherever I could over here. Again, I would cover some of this stuff with garbage bags and sheets and stuff, but because it's not my permanent summer spot for everything, um, I chose not to do that today. I did just kind of leave it the way it was in the middle because I did not actually do this, the janitors did. And so I'm guessing that they're happy with the way this is. And also because I'm just not really sure what the better solution for it is. So I did just leave all the desks and chairs there over here this is my garbage pile from the day oh my goodness it's like five huge garbage bags ready to be taken out so i did get rid of a lot of stuff which makes me happy and then i've got my take home pile over there with a few things that i found that i will take home today okay so that is where i'm going to leave you for today like i said it was kind of like an awkward cleanup because it's not my permanent summer way of leaving things and it's just to kind of give a little bit more space for some cleaning to happen this week. And then my new classroom is actually going to be painted. And so I'm actually not allowed in there for a couple weeks. So hang tight for part two of my classroom pack up series and the big move, I suppose, down the hallway. My classroom is actually pretty far from here. So it's going to be a workout on the days that I choose to be moving things back and forth. But it is what it is and I know I'll be happy once I get settled in there. I think it's hard to leave a space that you grew comfortable in, but it's important to be ready and open to new beginnings. So that is what I'll say about that. Remember to leave a comment below if you have any storage suggestions or tips for me in my big classroom move. I would also love to hear what your position looks like next year um, if schools open as usual. Did you have to change grades? Did you have to move classrooms? What does your position look like next year? Please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear about that. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up because it really supports my channel. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos from me. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.